Hey there, Wootsuit family, it's Ryan here, and today I'm gonna to cover a lot of topics. We're gonna to be talking about some masculinity, we're gonna have a callback to the last episode, I'm gonna talk about a process that I use, and I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of coon in there for you. So let's get philosophical. All right, so first, let's talk about something that I mentioned in my last video. So I was talking about internet positivity, and I was talking about how people tend to fixate on negative critical things. And when I was looking over that video, I realized that I was running dangerously close to the idea that there should never be negativity or that there should never be criticism. And so I want to elaborate on that idea for just a moment and talk about the idea of the constructive criticism. Now when I say constructive criticism, I'm thinking of something specific here. And in this case, I'm thinking about the plus delta. What's the plus delta? It's actually a system that I cribbed from a, a buddy of mine, and it's the idea that when you're going to do a review of reasons why something didn't work, you always focus on two things. You focused on what worked, the pluses, and rather than focusing on the bad things, you focus on the deltas. What is it we can change? Now, I'm not saying that the internet needs to always be positivity. It always needs to be pluses. But there's a time and a place to have good, meaningful, critical reflections. But it's important to think about the delta, not the negatives. This week I read a fascinating article about tender masculinity. And I'm going to put the link to it down below. But in it, it talks about the idea of celebrating and highlighting instances of the concept of tender masculinity as opposed to toxic masculinity. Now this is the first time I've actually encountered the idea of tender masculinity. Almost everything that I read about tends to be cashed out in terms of patriarchy and toxic masculinity. So this is a new concept for me. And the reason why I bring this up is because in the conclusion, there was this really interesting idea embedded in there. It's the idea that while yes, toxic masculinity is bad, it's important to highlight and showcase these examples of what we want to see in media because you can criticize things like toxic masculinity or negative portrayals of things in media, but if you don't propose a solution to it or propose the alternative that can take its place in the end, then it can often breed more of the thing that you don't want to see. And that struck a chord with me, and I think it struck a chord because it harkens back to an idea that I remember reading about in philosophy half a decade ago. So, philosophical lesson for you. Okay, so there's this guy, Thomas Kuhn, philosopher. 1962, he releases a book called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. And in it, he basically, he describes that science is not a linear progression of ideas that get better over time. It's not evolution of thought. What he says is science basically goes through these cycles of order and destabilization and revolution and then new paradigms. He's the one that talks about this idea of paradigm shifts. You have a community of scientists who agree upon theories that explain observable facts and at some point a new group of scientists are going to come along with a different set of hypotheses to explain the data and at some point there's going to be a revolution and one of the theories is gonna take over and become the new norm. Ptolemaic science gave way to Copernican science, gave way to Galilean science, gave way to Newtonian science, gave way to Einsteinian science, and on and on and on it goes from there. The one thing that he says that's really important about it is he says you can never have two true competing theories. You're always gonna have a dominant theory and then a theory that comes along and threatens the stability of that theory. In order to get rid of the old theory, the new theory has to completely supplant it and remove it from consideration. This idea that you can't have old stuff kicking around from the new theory, basically everything gets jettisoned out. You might use the same words, you might use the same observations, you might use the same tools, but the thing is, is the new science can't take over until it can fully account for all of the phenomenon accounted in the original science. Okay, now you're thinking to yourself, Ryan, what the crap are you talking about? What does this have to do with anything? The idea proposed in this article that we should embrace and highlight the things that we want to see in media, in this case, tender masculinity. This is a thing that Kuhn was talking about in terms of paradigms. In order to have good positive representations in media, you can't just criticize the old representations in media. You have to provide something in order to take its place. Now, when I read the title of the article, I didn't think I was gonna have this huge philosophical reflection on it. And it got me thinking about last week's video, it got me thinking about my philosophical training, and it got me thinking about portrayals of media that I would like to see, highlight, and celebrate. In other words, the plus, the things that are good, and the delta, the things that we wanna change. Philosophy, it's the discipline that just keeps on giving except for a paycheck.
Anyways, I want to hear from you. Let me know down in the comments below, what kind of media portrayals would you like to see? What kind of things do you want to celebrate and amplify so that everybody can share in these wonderful things? I want to hear what you have to say down below. Anyways, thanks for stopping by and don't forget, stay awesome.